Good morning, ABF family and friends. We'd like to thank you for tuning into our worship experience on today. We want to give God the highest praise because this is the day that he has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. So wherever you at in your homes, in your living room, we want you to worship with us on today. today that we have everything we need for the great I am provides for us. Hallelujah. 
Aleluia.
us. The song says he's everything. He's given us everything that we need. Thank you, Father, in this spirit, in this season of thankfulness, Father. We just want to say thank you, God. We give you all the glory and honor for everything that you've done for us, Father. Lord, if you don't give us anything else, Lord, you've already supplied our needs, Father. We don't need to ask you for anything, Father, because you've already supplied it, God. Lord, even through this season, this trying time of COVID, God, you've given us everything that we need. So we thank you, Father God. We thank you for everything you've done, Father. Father God, if we had 10,000 tongues, we still couldn't thank you enough, Father God. So we just give you this prayer of gratitude, Father God, this song of gratitude, Father God. And we're just so thankful, God. We thank you, God. We honor you, God. We can't even honor you enough, Lord, because you supplied all our needs. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. And we are just so grateful that you loved us, that you adopted us into your family, Father. Father God, so thank you for calling us your child. Thank you, Jesus, for just being who you are. Thank you, Jesus, for being who you are. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for being our Daddy. Thank you, Daddy. Ooh, you got to have a relationship with God to call him Daddy. <laughs> Not just your Father, but your Daddy. Ooh, thank you for being our Daddy. We just love you. Oh, we give you glory, not for the turkey that we had, not for the dressing, Lord, but just for you. Because you supplied all our needs, even with all of our losses, God. We lost our job, but you still supplied our needs. You're still the greatest provider, Father God. We had the enemy, the haters came against us, God, but you still provided for us, Father God. People are calling us out of our names. They're disrespecting our reputation, but God, you're still God. You're still the great I am. And we just thank you, Jesus. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence that never leaves us. Thank you for your covering. Thank you for your love. That agape love is so unconditional. We don't deserve it, but we thank you anyway. We just give you all of these things, Father God. We lift it all up to you, Father God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh Father, for being the great I am. So we are going to continue to bless your name with all that is within us. And when we praise him with all that is within us, we cannot be worried about the surface things. We can't be worried about what's happening and what's going on. We're going to bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. So come on and let's lift up a praise unto the King of Kings, the great I am, the Lord of Lords. Come on, right where you are, just put those hands together. We gonna bless the Lord today.
Good morning. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. And how was your Thanksgiving week? The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. You know, we have millions of people suffering with the COVID virus. Millions losing their lives. People in quarantine. People in lockdown. People working from home. Students studying from home. Many have lost their lives, their jobs. I have friends who are still in other parts of the world unable to go back home because of travel restrictions. But yet, in all of this, we've got to give thanks. Thanksgiving means just that. Giving thanks for what we have received. And the best way to do that is not with food and family, but with words from our hearts. If you're hearing the sound of my voice this morning, you should be thankful. You're alive. You're probably viewing this message at home, in the comfort of your home, on a TV screen or on a smart device. Be thankful. COVID didn't take you out. Be thankful. The whole idea behind Thanksgiving could be lost in all the traveling to be with family, all the food preparation and the Thanksgiving meal, and also the shopping. So let's continue to be prayerful and thankful. I could have simply called today's message Powerful Prayer Principles, but I figured I would have lost some of you in the first three minutes. So instead, I chose the title, Jerusalem and the Prayer of Jabez, for two reasons. What is Jerusalem, some of you may ask. 
Some of you may have seen the social media viral dance challenge of the South African song called Jerusalem, which almost, you know, overnight had everyone from police departments in Africa to priests in Europe posting their own Jerusalem dance videos. And get this, the lyrics of the song, if you didn't know it, is actually a personal prayer by the singer. The second reason is because of the prayer of Jabez. You may know the prayer of Jabez, how he prayed and was blessed by God. In First Chronicles 4 and 10, we read Jabez is praying. He says, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be on me and keep me from harm so that I will not, I'll be free. I'll be free from pain. That was his prayer. So I trust that you will stay with me and see how God answered the prayer of a frustrated South African singer, backup singer. And we'll also look at the prayer of Jabez and observe some powerful prayer principles which we can apply whenever we go before God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks to be in the land of the living this morning. You woke us up and we are in our right minds. Today is full of opportunities and we ask that you guide us with your Holy Spirit so that we would make the right decisions. As we gather this morning to worship you and magnify your holy name and to learn from you, speak to us in a manner that we will understand what it takes to come before you in prayer so that our petitions will bring results. I'm humbled, I'm humbled to stand before your people this morning with this charge. Speak through me and deliver your message. Your message of prayer that you have for this church today. This I ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. By a show of hands, how many of you have heard of the song, Jerusalem? Okay, let me bring you up to speed. The song Jerusalem is the undisputed global lockdown hit. It brought some relief to millions around the world at the height of the first wave of the coronavirus. This September, that song came, became the most shazammed song in history. It has been streamed more than 55 million times on Spotify. The music video was watched by more than 180 million times on YouTube. And TikTok, hashtag Jerusalem, has 385 million views. The song became a global hit, reaching the top five on music charts in Belgium, France, Hungary, the Netherlands. It also reached number four on the Billboard's world digital, digital sales. Now, after the song was released last November, it became a viral dance phenomenon, drawing not only the gospel community but politicians, sports stars, healthcare workers, and people from all over the world have taken on the challenge to copy the dance steps. So who are the people behind this monster hit? And what is the song about? The producer is Master KG. He created the music, and now he needed someone to write a song and to sing over the track. So he called Nomsebo Zigoti. Some reports say that she's a gospel singer, but most people know her as a backup singer for the last 15 years. Here's part of a story that was taken from an interview she gave to The Guardian, and I'm quoting from the article. 
The article says, last year when Master KG called late one evening to ask her to come to his studio in Mirand immediately to listen to the beats he had just written, she was close to giving up on her dreams of becoming a solo artist. She says, I was like, now? But he insisted. And after listening to the beats, she asked if she could take them home and work on the lyrics. Master G refused. So she chased him out of the studio so she could think alone. She listened to the track for about two or three times before the words began to come to her. The Zulu words when translated mean, Jerusalem is my home. Guide me, take me with you, don't leave me here. And in a nutshell, that's how the song Jerusalem was created and it became a hit that it is today. <clears throat> now why would I choose a topic like this? You know, when pastor asked me to bring a word to the church this morning, I didn't know what I was going to speak on, so I fasted. I got no answer. Then one night around two o'clock, I was sleeping while well, I got up. Actually, I was miserable. I couldn't go back to sleep. So I got out of my bed, took my Bible and went to the dining table. And I sat there, I read a couple Psalms, and I started to pray again for revelation, for an idea for my next message. Then I went back to bed. And just as I was about to fall asleep, I started to think about the story of Nosimbo and that song, Jerusalem, or the story behind the song. And suddenly, a flood of ideas about prayers came to me. So I jumped out of my bed and started to write down as much as I could remember. So here I am today. <clears throat> God still answers prayer. Prayer still works. The meat of my message is from one verse in the entire Bible. It is a prayer by a man who is mentioned twice in one book in the Bible. His name is Jabez. Now it's very easy to miss his name and his story which appears in the genealogy of Judah. Usually in a genealogy, you see the names and relationships of generations of people, and it's easy to skip past it. But in two short verses in 1 Chronicles 4, verses 9 and 10, we learn that Jabez caused his mother pain at birth. That's how he got his name. We learn, too, that he was more honorable than his brothers. We also learn that after he prayed, God blessed him. All that about one man in one verse in the Bible. His mother named him Jabez saying, I gave birth to him in pain. In Jewish culture, it is common to give a symbolic name to children. Also the name of a person somehow foretells their future. So Jabez probably was headed for a life of pain. You know, I'm surprised how many people don't know the real meaning of their name. The name you carry could be the reason you are where you are today. So we should be careful with the names we place on our children. My mother named me Andrew, and it's probably because of St. Andrew. The name means manly and strong. So when I started studying the Bible, I came to realize that Andrew in the Bible was the first to be called by Jesus. And he was the one who called others. Now get this. Although all my siblings and myself were christened as children in the Anglican Church. I am the first in my family to be baptized. So I guess 
I'm living the meaning of the name Andrew in the Bible. He was the first called. But poor Jabez, he had to live every day with his, of his life with that painful name. Imagine Jabez as a child playing with his friends. They've got this game. Last few seconds, he has the ball. And if he scores, they win. He fails. They, they lose. So now his friends, they start to tease him. And they say, Jabez, you are a pain in the you-know-what. That could be very demoralizing for a child, you know, and his name, he had to live with that all his life. But the scripture tells us that despite his painful beginning, he was honored because of his relationship with God. So honored was Jabez that there was a town named after him. <clears throat> In the second chapter of Chronicles, we learn that there was a clan of scribes who live in Jabez. That's the 55th verse of the second chapter of Chronicles. That's evidence that Jabez must have had people following in his ministry. Let's look at Chronicles, what Chronicles has to say about Jabez and his prayer. So we go to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, we're reading from verses 9 and 10. It says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to God, to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be on me and keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. And Chronicles tells us that God granted his request. Now that is all that is written about Jabez in the entire Bible. Theologians and songwriters have written a lot about this man and the little that is written about him. Jesus himself taught us how to pray. Yet there's something about this one sentence that Jabez says to God that is instructive to us today. So let us analyze the prayer so we can find some powerful prayer principles. Jabez in his prayer, he prayed for four things. First, that God would bless him. Jabez knew that the God of Israel is the source of all blessings. God blesses us with spiritual things as well as material things. When we ask him, in Mark, Jesus tells us, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. That's having faith. Hebrew tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The second thing Jabez prayed for was for his territory to be enlarged. Now, in studying for this message, I learned something new. Years ago, when I lived in New York City, I led worship for a small church. And I came across this song by Donald Lawrence called uh, Bless Me, It's the Lord, the prayer of Jabez. And I started singing it. I was also unemployed at that time. So when I sang that song, it was a prayer from my heart. Bless me, bless me. Oh Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Of course I was thinking about, not land, a job and money. But, Theologians agree that when Jabez prayed that prayer, enlarge my territory, he wasn't talking about land, 
or money. He was talking about being better able to serve the kingdom so that he would have more influence. He would have a wider sphere of influence with his work for God. Jabez didn't ask for material wealth like we hear today from those who promote the prosperity gospel. God would quicker give us a heart like Jesus than he would give us a million dollars. So look what happened to Jabez's legacy. His territory was enlarged because the city where the scribes lived according to First Chronicles was named after him. In the genealogy, they did not just put Jabez's name and his family tree. They also give a short summary of his life in the book that is reserved just for the names of families. So he must have been special. And as I was telling you that I learned something from studying that, this passage, after praying and singing, um, Lord bless me and enlarge my territory, I did get the job. And guess what else happened? I also started singing for another choir. Two choirs, not one. So yes, my territory was enlarged. So be careful what you pray for. The third thing that Jabez prayed for is that God's hand might be on him. Now Jabez, who was a scribe, as he transcribed many of the stories, he read all the stories of how the hand of God had saved Israel so many times in the past. So his prayer was that he knew that if, he, if God's hand was on him, he would be saved. His life would be one that would be pleasing to God. So he trusted God to direct his life. And in the end, we learned that he was more honorable than his brothers. The fourth thing we learn from this prayer of Jabez is that God would keep him from harm and free from pain. That was his prayer. Here Jabez is referring to his name, which means pain. Having to carry that name Jabez all his life, he knew if he wanted to overcome the stigma attached to that name, God would have to step in. So he was renouncing the negative effect of the name on his life. So he asked God to free him from harm so that pain would be a thing of the past. That shows that it is possible today to break generational curses that's over our lives when we take that problem to God in prayer. God can turn things around in our lives. The Bible tells us that after praying this simple one-sentence prayer, God blessed Jabez and granted his request. God's hand was on him. His ministry was enlarged. And no harm came to him as he became a respected man of God in Judah. Because of God's blessing on him, no longer would people make fun of his name and Jabez left behind a legacy of many scribes working in the town that was named after him. Jabez's prayers reminds me of another prayer in the Bible that God answered almost immediately. It was from King Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5, God appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream and said, ask for whatever you want, and I'll give it to you. In verse 8, Solomon made his request. He said, Lord, give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? And God answered, God was very pleased with Solomon's request. And in verse 11, God said, 
Since you have asked for this and not for long life and wealth for yourself, nor have you asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administrating justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never be anyone like you ever. And God said, moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you long life. Solomon had asked for the tools to be an effective leader of God's people. He got the tools and he got more. Humility has its reward. Could you imagine what the world would be like today if all leaders prayed like that? Asking for wisdom to lead a country instead of asking for votes to hold on to power. In Matthew 6, Jesus shares some powerful prayer principles with us. He tells us, When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room. Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. So what is Jesus saying here? in these principles. He's saying, don't pray for show. Prayer is not about you. He's also saying to find a quiet place. Go away from all the distractions so that you could focus on giving your heart to God. And then he also said, babbling. Babbling doesn't impress God at all. Many words doesn't impress him. God wants a sincere cry from your heart because it shows your dependence on him. Now, how does God answer when you pray like this? Now, it's important for us to know that when we pray, God answers our prayer based on his will, not our, which, our wishes. Remember the prayer in Gethsemane when Jesus prayed in agony? He said, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Even Jesus had to submit to the will of God the Father. So now don't expect all your prayers to be answered immediately or exactly the way you want them. Because sometimes God is saying to us, no, because you're not ready. He's saying, what you're asking for is too much for you to handle. It will be your downfall. I love you too much to put all that on you. It's like those people who ruin their lives after they win the lottery. They were not ready for that sudden wealth. Another way God answers, he says, yes, but wait a minute. You have to wait a little longer because God would bless you in his perfect timing. God also says, yes, I will grant you what you pray for, but not the way you want it. You see, you have to Trust God 
and don't depend on your own intelligence. Proverbs tells us to trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. God also says yes to our prayers and here's more for you, just as he did with Solomon when Solomon didn't ask to kill his enemies or for wealth. He asked for discernment. And another way that God answers prayer, well, it's not an answer. He's actually just waiting because we don't ask. James 4 and 2 says, you do not have because you do not ask. You know, the first three verses of James 4, that's a whole other sermon on prayer. It says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So just remember that God is waiting for your prayer request. Now, I started this message telling you about this South African gospel singer, Nom Sebo, and the song, Jerusalem. The words of that song, as simple as they are, it's a cry from her heart, just like Jabez. I could imagine her sitting in the studio saying, in her frustration, I can't do this anymore. I have backed up so many other singers for the last 15 years. When will I get my break? Life on the road has its challenges for a young mother with a husband. And she was considering calling it quits. She was going through a very tough and difficult time and praying that things would change she was asking God to take her to a spiritual Jerusalem where she would find happiness. When she received the music, she chased the producer out of the studio. In other words, she was trying to find a quiet place with no distractions. You know what? She did not write a song about finding love, about making more money, about having the happy life. Instead, the desires of her heart, she laid it all out in that song. And the song that says, Jerusalem is my home. Guide me. Take me with you. Don't leave me here. During the early days of the gospel pandemic, of the, yeah, the global pandemic, I wish we have a gospel pandemic. The song became a source of relief for millions around the world. As they sang and they danced to the song, doors that were once closed to Nomsimbo were now opening. In August of this year, she released her first CD. And guess what? As a solo artist, her first CD went platinum. That is over one million copies sold. And she's now a celebrated artist. The prayer of Nomsimbo and the prayer of Jabez, they're both under 15 seconds long. Try reading them. It's that short, yet powerful enough to touch the heart of God. It's like the prayer Peter prayed when he was drowning after he started walking on water. He cried, Lord, save me. Peter didn't have time to use fancy words. In a moment of desperation, he cried out so that he would not drown. That is a type of prayer that reaches God's heart. Are you drowning in life's circumstances? Cry out to God. He is waiting 
and he's listening. While I have time, let me invite you to join the ABF prayer line. You know, since June of this year, we started praying three times a day. So now you have no excuse. You can join one of those sessions three times a day. Join in. Check the ABF website for a number to call and be part of the prayer line. Do you have a desperate prayer this morning? You need to take it to the Lord today. It does not have to be lengthy. It does not have to be full of fancy words. God wants to hear your heart. Listen, it took Jabez and Nosimbo less than 15 seconds to make their supplications known to God. Wherever you are this morning, those of you at home watching, I want you to stand. Stand for 30 seconds. That problem that has been bothering you, that situation that is about to take you out, take it to God in prayer right now. 30 seconds, stand where you are. Release it in the atmosphere. Make your request known to God. Trust Him. Exercise your faith this morning. 30 seconds, that's all we ask. Remember, you have not because you ask not. Lift your voice. Make your prayer known to Him. And like Jabez, you can sing. Increase, increase. Oh Lord, bless me indeed, enlarge my territory. God make your supplications known to him ask him to bless you ask him to enlarge your territory oh Lord bless us today hear our prayer Lord as we bring it to you I pray for increase I pray for increase Lord, my territory, enlarge my territory, oh Lord, bless me indeed, bless me that you are blessed by this message today take your supplications to God in prayer Amen
enlarge my territory. Thank you, Jesus. Before we let you go, we just want to let you know about a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, we uh, want to tell you how to give. Um, honor the Lord with your giving and your tithes and offerings. The Bible says to test him in this. So we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to give. You, there's three ways to give. You can give online. You can give through the ABF app. Or you can send uh, your, uh, uh, your tithes and offering via the mail. So here's the information there. Um, also, if, you, if this is your first time, second time, you're a third time guest, uh, we'd love to hear about you, know more about you. Um, online there is a um, new member card. Please let us know about you. Give us your information. We'd love to talk uh, talk to you, get to know you, invite you to the service. We are still open um, and we're socially distant. God uh, bless. And so please come. Um, and then as Brother uh, Bruce mentioned, we do pray three times a day. And this prayer line, guys, is life changing. I personally uh, pray at 1230 every single day and it's at lunch and it's amazing. It's a great time. Um, great time in the Lord, right in the middle of the day, in the middle of my stressful day. Um, so we pray three times a day, 6.30 a.m. Uh, we pray at um, 12.30 as well as 6 p.m. Uh, groups, we love our groups. It's a time to fellowship and get together. We meet almost every single day in the week. So go online to above.org, get the information on the different groups and uh, have fellowship and give, go deeper into the word. Um, and if nothing else, we just want to say live life above and beyond. We love you guys. Thank you. Have an awesome Sunday. <laughs>